good to be in the Lord's house today, and what a blessing it is. We are past the elections, and uh, that is over behind Amen. us. Amen. Uh, a lot of things that we need to pray about, but praise God, God is still on the throne. Got some special guests here today, Chris and uh, Meg Pluto. Uh, we go way back, I've known them for a long time. They're missionaries over in Wales, and now figuring out what God's going to do with them. We're going to send them to be ministers next. So, amen. Good to have them with us. I love this tie. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Uh, Tasha visiting with us as well with Aaron, not to be confused with Aaron Reyes. Amen. And Aaron, what's your last name? Aaron Montgomery, amen. So we got Aaron Reyes and Aaron Montgomery here. Praise God for them, amen. Uh, Bev is out uh, today and uh, uh, taking some time out of town. Her and Carl, so pray for them as she's been the worldwide traveler here lately. And uh, I tell you, it is uh, exciting to see what God is doing. Well, let's uh, sing our first hymn, and that's going to be the Spirit of the Living God. It's been our theme all month long, so we're going to sing that chorus again. I know it's difficult to sing with a mask on, so if you need to pull that down while you sing, that is absolutely okay. If you don't, you may fog up your glasses if you wear glasses, amen. Uh, mine get fogged up very quickly. Uh, but Spirit of the Living God has been our theme all year long. We need uh, the Spirit of God to fall fresh on us so that we can function in uh, this time in which we're living, amen. I hope you're not confused or dumbfounded by what's going on because none of this caught God by surprise, amen. God knows what's going on. And uh, it's going to work out according to his plan. We just need to get on his plan and we'll be fine. Amen. Amen. Uh, Spirit of the living God, let's go ahead and sing that. Christ today before it's everlasting too late. 
Then under the sound of my voice, if there's one here today without Christ, speak to that man, wood, boy, or girl, they would receive Christ for the last and too late. And Lord, we thank you again, a blessing, our service time, our singing, our announcement, the sermon, all that you would receive all the praise, honor, and glory. Calm our hearts, calm our spirits, help us not to get so riled up about what we see or what we think or what may happen, Lord, but just trust you, the living God, to work in our midst. We thank you, love you, and praise you for who you are and what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I tell you, it's a blessing uh, being able to be in the house of God and to see, to gather, and to know that God is on the throne. You know, people uh, that don't have Christ are just subject to the whims of society, and they're subject to the media and what's going on. And I'm just so glad that we have a God in heaven that we serve and that we know and that he is our father and we're in, in his good hands. Amen. So uh, it is just good to know that being saved comes with a lot of benefits. Amen. Amen. And Amen. one is the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Oh, well, this week, Diana is having the second part of her um, it's cataract surgery, right? Cataract surgery, and that's Thursday. So let's make sure we pray for her Thursday, November 12th, uh, that everything goes well with her surgery there. And uh, that would be a blessing. Amen. We've got Rejoice in the Lord. So we're going to get that one up. And uh, that chorus, Rejoice in the Lord. Notice the word, though. Rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistakes. A lot of people look at it. Well, actually, that's a mistake. He makes no mistakes. Amen. Uh, Trump was a mistake, and Biden's not a mistake either. He knows the end of each path that I take. And when I'm tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. Amen. I, I am a firm believer that what God is allowing is for the benefit of God's people. Uh, that we can pray, seek his face, and get a hold of him for the benefit of our country. Amen. I, I'm convinced of that because God makes no mistakes. Amen. Oh, rejoice in the Lord. And we'll sing that through. And if you think about the chorus that is being sang. Learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus. 
Uh, is that is, is that what's happening during this time? Amen. Lord, we can lean on Jesus. Amen. We can't lean on Trump. We can't lean on Biden. Amen. We could, couldn't lean on Obama. We couldn't lean on Bush before that. We've got to learn to lean on Jesus. Amen. amen. Because He is where it's all happening. Amen. I'm learning to lean on Jesus, finding more power than I ever dreamed. Amen. I mean, that's powerful. More power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. How many have heard that chorus song before? Learn to lean, amen. All right. We're going to sing that as a, our chorus, amen. So, Jesus, give us an intro on that one.
Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Amen. And his name is holy, it is sovereign, and uh, he is worthy. Amen. Let me turn myself on, gentlemen. And, uh, you know, with this pandemic and uh, us having to do Facebook uh, to make sure all of our members hear the message, I've not been able to run around up here like I normally do. And so I feel I'm kind of confined, amen, not being able to walk. But, uh, but this far and this far, amen, I, I feel like I'm in a cave. So I'm looking forward to getting things back where I can move around more freely and uh, get back and forth, amen. Psalm 33, 12, open your Bibles there, stand if you're able we're going to read several passages that we have looked at over the past couple of weeks, starting with Psalm 33, 12. Psalm 33, 12. Next one is going to be Psalm 75, 5. Uh, but uh, this one is Psalm 33, 12. And we have been uh, teaching and preaching about uh, selection and election and uh, how we should pick a candidate and what we should look for. And based upon the biblical knowledge that we have, choosing uh, someone that God would have in the office, understanding that nobody's perfect, amen? Uh, there's never been a perfect president in the White House, amen? Not going to be a perfect president until Jesus is king, amen? amen? And then we'll have perfection, amen? And still have unruly subjects at that point, amen? Uh, Psalm 33, 12, read that with me together. Here we go. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. And then come over to Psalm 75, 5. Psalm 75, 5. And I'm not going to preach on these verses, uh, but just a reminder of the past several weeks that we have been visiting this, this subject Psalm 75, 5, and we're going to read verses 5, 6, and 7. Uh, read that with me. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Amen. And then come over with me to Proverbs 14 and verse 34. And again, these are all verses that we have visited over the past few weeks. Proverbs 14 and verse 34, talking about uh, uh, the selection and election. Proverbs 14, 34, read that with me. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. Amen. And the last one is Proverbs 21, verse 1. Proverbs 21 and verse 1. And I like this one especially. Proverbs 21, verse 1. And read that with me. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Amen. And notice verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. Amen. Father, bless now these next moments uh, that we have as we consider the subject. Uh, voting is done now and what for Christians. Lord, work. In our hearts, so Lord, help the listeners that are viewing online to be attentive and may the message and the scriptures and the content affect uh, their lives for the glory of God. And Lord, the same for the members that are here, the visitors and the friends that, Lord, the word of God would hit the heart of each and every child of God. And we would leave here differently than when we came in, Lord, more enlightened on the will of God, more knowledgeable about the word of God, Lord, and then more instructed on the will of God for our nation. We thank you and love you and praise you, Lord, if there is again one here without Christ, help that man, woman, boy, or girl, one listening online, help them receive Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I've got several things here that we're going to be talking about over the next uh, week, uh, but uh, the title of the message is Voting is Done, Now What for Christians? Amen. The voting is done, now what for Christians? Brother Aaron sent a group text out that embodied the Christian's response, and 
it said this, no matter who's president, Jesus is king. Amen. 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 And uh, I'm sure some of you probably saw that, some of you probably sent that, some of you probably forwarded that as well. But that just embodies the Christian response. No matter who's president, Jesus is king. Our responsibility is and always has been to our king, Jesus. Amen. Always has been. Amen. Nothing has changed. By the way, as we move on to President-elect uh, Biden and uh, Senator Harris as vice president, as we move on to that, nothing really changes for us as Christians. Does that surprise you? Nothing really changes for us. Go over in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 12. You say, preacher, nothing changes. Nothing really changes. Hebrews chapter 12, and Hebrews chapter 12 talks about you and I. By the way, if you didn't know this, you and I are in a race. Y'all know that? They know you're in a race. And Hebrews 12 uh, speaks about that race. And notice what he says here in Hebrews 12, verse number 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. In other words, uh, Paul, the writer of Hebrews, had been talking about some past events in chapter 11. And these witnesses are witnessing, uh, witnesses to what's going on in our lives, amen? And you and I are in that same group, amen? Somebody's watching us, namely Jesus Christ, amen? Uh, he's watching what we do. So we're comes about with some great cloud witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Notice this. And let us run with what? Patience. That's cheerful or hopeful endurance. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. By the way, you can't run somebody else's race. Amen. Nor can somebody run your race. You've got to stay in your lane. You've got to run your race. And your race is for you and you alone. You get outside of your race, you're disqualified, amen? Nothing out there for you. Inside your lane or your race, there's everything that God has for you. So notice what he says there. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How are we to run this race? Verse number two. Looking unto who? Jesus. And that's why what Aaron said so much embodies our response. No matter who's president, Jesus is king. Looking unto Jesus, notice this, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, what did he do? Entered the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. So nothing really changes. Our race has not changed. We still have to run our race. We still are headed towards Jesus. We still are keeping our eyes on him. It's never been about keeping our eyes on what's going on around us because that will distract you. It's never been about looking at who's in the office. It's never been about looking at who's around me. It's never been about that. Never. So nothing really changes for the Christian. Now, will it affect how we do business and things like that? Of course it will. Will it affect our children growing up behind us? Of course it will. But it, not, it doesn't nullify the fact that you and I are still running a race and we're still looking at Jesus despite what's going on around us. Were we running the race during Trump administration? Yes, we were. Were we running the race during the Obama administration? Yes, we were. Were we running the race when it was the Bush administration? Yes, we were. And you go down and down and down. And guess what? We were still running the race, and some of those situations may have affected us, but it did not deter our race because we're looking under Jesus. These things are going to come and go around us. By the way, uh, Biden's going to come. Biden's going to go. Harris is going to come. Harris is going to go. A new person will be up on the, the next presidency. He may do eight years. He may do four years. But guess what? That doesn't change what we do. It doesn't change our race at all. So nothing really changes. Nothing changed our race when same-sex marriage was approved nationwide, did it? Did it, did it change the way you had handled your Christianity? No, you just had to put up with same-sex marriages around you. By the way, let me say this. Never get anesthetized to the abominable act that it is. 
Amen. We get so used to seeing it that we think, well, you know, there's another one. No, it should disgust us every time we see it. Now, not the people. Amen. Not the people. You hate the sin, you love the sinner. But we get so anesthetized to seeing it that it's just commonplace. Never get used to it. It's abomination to God. Always has been, always will be. We love the sinner, but we hate sin. Amen. Nothing changed. Our race with same-sex marriage was approved nationwide. Nothing changed. Our race, nothing will change our race if the LGBT supporters change our laws. Nothing will change our race if abortion laws are modified uh, and approved more. Nothing will change our race now that recreational use of marijuana has passed. Nothing will change our race. Well, nothing changed our race when alcohol became legal years ago. We're still running our race, and nothing will change our race no matter who's in the White House. No matter what laws they make, we still have a higher law and a higher authority. Amen. So it matters not what happens around us. It matters not what gets approved over here and what gets approved over here. Yes, it may make it difficult for us. Yes, we may have to be more tolerable with people on our jobs that have this lifestyle, but we should never get used to the fact where, yeah, okay, that's okay. It's never okay. That will be, never has been. Sin is still sin, it's still ugly. Amen? Amen. All right, so no matter who's president, Jesus is king, and Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 still applies. Our responsibility as Christians is and always has been first to our king, Jesus. Well, let me stick to my notes on this next part so I don't get messed up. Amen. The election is over, and the majority of the American people have chosen. Biden and Harris to lead this nation. First, there's a historical accomplishment. Senator Harris first female vice president-elect. She's the first black Asian vice president-elect. Two historical accomplishments. You can't get around that. You can't get around that. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's an accomplishment. You have now had a black president in the office and now a vice president. You can't get around the historical accomplishment of that. That means that anybody can get in those offices if they are elected. That's a historical company. You can't get away from that. I'm not talking about her moral stand. I'm not talking about her political affiliation. I'm talking about the fact of the matter. The fact of the matter is that uh, about 100 years ago, blacks couldn't even vote. Now we had a president and a vice president. That's a historical accountant. Got nothing to do with her political I'm not talking about that at all. I'm just about the fact of the matter. And you have to say, praise God for America. We have that capability. And so with that in mind, they both have proven themselves to be capable leaders. Uh, Biden underneath Obama for uh, eight years as the vice president, they both proven to be capable leaders uh, and politicians. And I believe they will do good, a good job in many areas for our country. I'm not negating that fact. I believe they will do a lot of good in this nation. I, I just believe that. Now, am I endorsing the candidacy? I am not doing it. I'm just speaking factual. Did President Trump do a lot of good in this country? Yes, he did. Did he do a lot of bad? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. The fact of the matter is, as with all administrations, there will be good and there will be bad. No one is perfect. There's never been a perfect president. Enjoy the good. How many of y'all enjoy those stimulus checks? Amen. If you didn't, give it to me. I'll take it. Amen. Hey. I mean, enjoy it every time uh, President Trump, uh, Trump got on the tweet, start tweeting some stuff. What am I saying? You enjoy the good, and the bad is still disgusting. It, it doesn't make it right, and it doesn't make it sad. Every presidency will have good, and it'll have bad. It'll have good points, it'll have bad points. It'll have good laws, it'll have bad laws. Same-sex marriage was bad law. Uh, you say, preacher, that's your religious belief. No, that's God's belief. I just happen to agree with God. Amen. Amen. We've run our race with alcohol being legal for many years. 
We run the same, uh, our, 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 our uh, race with same-sex marriage being legal for four years. And guess what? We'll need to continue running our race with new legalizations until Jesus comes. There's always going to be a new legalization of something that God says is wrong. Amen. Amen. Come on now, I'm, I'm just saying. However, keep in mind that political journalists and officials have said this, and this is this is a paraphrase of a quote that they made. Political journalists and officials said America will be more liberal than it has ever been in its existence over the next four years. That's what the pol politicians have said, and that's what the journalists have said. That America will be more liberal than it's ever been over the next four years in its allowances and its tolerances. I'm just saying. Why? To please a wider majority of people. Got to give them the umbrella. Hey, the Pope is going online with uh, a same-sex marriage and lesbian and gay. Think about it. Who, who is our president? The Pope is worldwide. Our president is only for states. My mother used to say that, by the way, no matter what becomes acceptable by law, we can never get anesthetized to sin. It is not acceptable to God. It's not acceptable to us. There's a real danger. Amen. You and I get anesthetized to sin. And what's tolerant and legal in America, we join in and start doing it. Just because the world's doing it doesn't make it right. I'm going to when I was a kid, because everybody jumped off the cliff. You're going to jump off too. And for some, it depends on what's on the other side. This is another statement my mother made. If you throw a frog in boiling, if you throw a frog in boiling water, he'll jump out. But if you put him in cold water and slowly turn up the heat, you can boil it without him jumping out. What's the meaning behind that? We can get so anesthetized to sin that we're in it, we're fried, boiled, whatever the case may be. Same-sex marriage is legal. Have nothing to do with the Obama administration. It's commonplace now. Should, that, should, should we get used to it? No. But if we're not careful, we will. If we're not careful, we will. And every other thing that is legalized over the next four years that is contrary to the word of God, if we get anesthetized to it, start accepting it as right, we're going to get in trouble. I believe America is already on a slippery slope, uh, being prepared for its downfall through the Antichrist to take it over. And this is just one of those stepping stones. And so I believe that if we ever get used to sin, we're going to be in trouble. By the way, going forward in a more, more liberal America, we must continue hating sin and loving the sinner. And uh, if, if America is going to become more liberal, then what is the will of God for the nation? By the way, it still hasn't changed. Proverbs 14, 34, we just read it. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It still has not changed no matter who's in the White House, whether it's Trump or Pence, Biden or Harris, Obama and Biden. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. What matters is what you and I do. What matters is what we stand for. Matthew 5 tells us what God wants Christians and nation to do over the next four years. And guess what? It's the same that we did in the last four years. <laughs> Matthew 5, many of us know the scripture we still quote, especially if you listen on Wednesday night, you say that. Matthew chapter number 5. And uh, notice down there in verse number 13. What does God want for us? What Jesus preached about on the Serpent of the Mount, Matthew 5, 13. Read that verse 13 with me. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. In other words, Jesus said, I want you to be some salt. Make a difference. Make a difference. 
Verse 14, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on the hill, cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle, put under a bushel on the candlestick, and neither light unto all that are in the house. So what is Jesus telling this group of believers at this time? He said, your salt go out and make a difference, your light go out and shine. What does verse 16 read with me? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus wants us to be salt and light in our cities, in our states, in our nation, in our homes, wherever we go, on our jobs. By the way, if we do that, it's not going to matter what's going on around us. By the way, if you are salt and light, people will be uncomfortable in their sin around you. Even if you love them. Did Jesus love people? Yes, he did. Were people still uncomfortable around him? Yes, they were. And he loved them. He was the epitome of love. And they still had problems with him. So if you love the sinner and hate their sin, and if you're so light, guess what? They're not going to be around you a whole lot. And may I dare say that probably you ought not be around them either. Amen. Why? You'll get anesthetized sooner or later to their behavior and what they're doing. Birds of a feather do what? Fly together. Amen. It's not Bible, but it's true. So what do we do in preparation for the years ahead? Remember, we stood for the Bible through the passing of the same-sex marriage, and we can stand for the Bible in the days ahead, no matter what laws are passed. Do we know what laws will be passed? No, we really don't. We have an idea of what laws may be passed. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and so that changed what we do as a Christian. It really shouldn't. Why? Because we're looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so over the next couple of messages, we're going to look at some people that had to stand. And let me just read off a few. Jesus stood when Pilate was in charge, and he was not ugly about it. Somebody say amen. Did you ever find Jesus being ugly with Pilate? No, he wasn't. Uh, Paul stood in Rome and Nero was in charge of accusing Christians and he wasn't ugly about it. Matter of fact, he said submit to the government. Wow, there's one. They're trying to kill you and you got to submit to them? Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood in Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar was in charge and they weren't ugly about it. Amen. Moses stood when he, when, uh, when he was with Pharaoh, when Pharaoh was in charge, and he wasn't ugly about it. Joseph stood when Pharaoh was in charge, and he wasn't ugly about it. Lot even managed to stand when it, when it came to his doorstep, and he was forced to make a choice, and he wasn't ugly about it. He just said, do not so wickedly. Now, he could have went out and said, you sodomizers, you um, ungodly people. But he didn't say that. By the way, the angels... Put it inside anyway, and angels took over. <laughs> so we can stand for the Bible, and we don't have to be ugly. The one thing people don't want to see is an ugly Christian getting out on tweet. Well, I'll tell you what that's true, man. That's a sodomy, and they're just disgusting, and people that do that are just abominable. People don't want to hear that. If you're going to do something, people buy worse. They'll get mad at you if you try. Don't be ugly. We don't, we don't have to be ugly over the next four years. We had enough ugly last four years. Somebody say amen. Now, I don't agree with all of what Trump did, but I can tell you what. Certain things didn't get passed under his administration. Certain things that got passed under Obama's administration. Now, I'm not saying Obama's a bad president either. He did a lot of good. But he did some bad too. Uh, Trump did some bad, but he did some good too. A Biden and Harris can do some good, but they can do some bad too. Why? At the end of the day, they're just sinners. They're just sinners. So if all these people stood without being ugly, can you and I stand at our jobs, in our homes, with our relatives, in the community, on the internet? Can we stand without being ugly? Yes, we can. How can we? Keeping our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Laying aside the weights and the sins that so easily beset us, because they can detract from our ministry. By the way, I preached a message uh, years ago about the, the presidency. And I said, if you had a choice between a Barabbas and Judas Iscariot, which one would you choose? And it kind of equated them to the candidates. 
And uh, actually, what, who would you pick, Judas or Barabbas? You know, Barabbas was a murderer and an insurrectionist. He was loud and open about it. Uh, Judas was a devil and a thief. But may I submit to you that people on both sides like both of them? The disciples liked Judas because they didn't know his true character was on. Jesus handpicked Judas because he knew he had to have someone that could play the part without detracting from his ministry. Uh, uh, Bar Barabbas, on the other hand, was a murderer and insurrectionist. People liked him because he stood up to the government. And they didn't like Roman oppression and Roman rule. And so who would you pick, Barabbas or Judas? And sometimes those happen to be our choices. Amen. And the person that you pick is the one that is closest to the agenda that you stand for. Now, our agenda is God. Guess what? We'll make our choices based on morality. If not, we're going to make it for Barabbas and we're going to make it for Judas, whichever one looks good to us. Amen. Let me give you this first one and we're going to go ahead and close. Amen. Uh, you and I have to stand for the Bible way now more than ever with many other things that may get enacted into law in the days ahead and become acceptable. Uh, by the way, your employer or your employee may come in with marijuana. It's legal now. They can do that. So what are you going to do? It's legal. Just like same-sex marriage is legal. You can't say anything to them. Well, you're unlegally married. They can pull out a little birth certificate. What do you call that thing? Marriage certificate. I'm trying to think. wedding certificate. That doesn't sound right. Amen. A marriage certificate. So they say, look, by the laws of whatever state, I'm married legally. Jane and Jan. Uh, Bill and Bob. What are you going to do? Be ugly? You're an abominable person. No. You, you still got to love them. And you still got to live according to the word of God. We give you this first one, and then we're going to close. Because throughout this, over the next message, we're going to take a look at Daniel and rehearse some of the things done out of the book of Daniel. And uh, so that we can gauge our past, gauge our path for the present, and then our potential future. And by the way, Daniel lived in Babylon with Babylon rules that were deemed right to Babylon. There's only one problem with that. Daniel's not Babylonian. Daniel's a Jew. Certain laws in this country may get enacted. And guess what? You're not a citizen of this country in that respect. You're a citizen of heaven. Amen. So no matter what laws may get enacted, you don't have to get involved in those. Somebody say amen. Let me, let me give you point number one. Daniel's purpose led to requests. Daniel's purpose led to requests. Go to Daniel 1, verse 8. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Of course, we all know Daniel's purpose in his heart, not to defile himself. And, and by the way, that half battle right there. If you don't have a purpose in your heart to stand for something, you'll fall for anything. It just goes without saying. Daniel 1, 8. Daniel's purpose led to request. Notice Daniel 1, 8. Of course, you know the story. Most of us know the story. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, of course, uh, sacks uh, Jerusalem and uh, takes Israel captive, and he takes some of the best and the finest of the children, and he wants to groom them and make them able to stand with him and his king and his court. He wants the finest to do that. And so he pulls out many of them. And uh, notice verse number four before we get down there. Um, Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding and science, such as had ability in them to stand in king's palace, whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. That's what they wanted to do, teach them the tongue, teach them the language, teach them all about that. Verse 5, and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So he's going to give them their drink and give them their meat, but it's his meat that's allowable for them, but not for the Jews. Verse 6, now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. We know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. Uh, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of 
Shadrach and to Shiel of Meshach and Azariah of Abednego. Notice verse 8. Because Daniel's purpose led to a request. But Daniel, notice this, purpose in his heart that he would not be found himself with a portion of the king's meat. What am I saying here? You and I are going to have the purpose that we're going to obey God other than what man says. We're going to have the purpose that and say, God, I'm going to obey you. I don't care what laws are enacted. I don't care what liberties they may give me and tell me I can do this. By the way, how many y'all over 21? Guess what? All of you can drink alcohol if you so choose. It's deemed appropriate by the government. But now, how many of us do drink? I would say very few because we have a higher mandate that says wine is a mocker, strong drink is raising, a great, great raising. Raising, who's happened thereby is deceived, is not wise. So we have a higher law, although we can do it. I mean, y'all can smoke cigarettes. You're over 18, you can smoke cigarettes. I mean, y'all smoke cigarettes, amen? Many of us don't, some do, amen? They say, well, cigarettes ain't going to send me hell. They won't, but that's been a situation. They just feel like you've been there, amen? But many of the laws that we have in this country, we can do them, but many of us choose not to, based upon the knowledge that we have of the Word of God. Now, if I don't have the knowledge, guess what? I'm going to do some of those things. That's that just goes with the territory. They're placed in a situation here where they have this meat that's unlawful for a Jew and this wine that's unlawful for a Jew offered to them like you and I are going to be in America and have things offered to us. Same-sex marriage is offered to you. Other things are going to be offered to you. Abortion, lesbian, gay, and bisexual, and transgender rights. Certain things are going to be offered to you. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor the wine which he drank. Therefore he what? Requested. Let's say, therefore he got belligerent. Therefore he got ugly. Therefore he gave a piece of his mind. Therefore he stood up and said, bless God, I'm a Jew and I will do that. No, therefore he requested that the prince of the eunuchs, notice this, that he might not defile himself. No ugliness. He didn't get an attitude. He didn't cop bad and say, do you know who I am? My God is able to smite you down and kick you over. He didn't say that. What am I saying? Over the next four years, like you have done over the previous four years and before that, we will have the purpose in our hearts not to defile ourselves with society's agenda of what they say is right as opposed to what God said is wrong. We're going to have to say, I'm opposed to that. I'm not going to do that. Hey, folks, have me at my job all the time. Hey, we're going over to this bar. I said, I'm not going. Why? As a Christian, that's not what I do. Well, it's not going to hurt you. I said, it's not going to help me either. By the way, you'll be drinking and grinding. But we're going over here to hang out and do this. Are you coming? No, I'm not going because I don't do that. Well, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it for a Christian? And they couldn't answer me. So you know what I said? I said, well, you give me a good biblical answer, then I'll join you. Until you give me a good biblical answer, then I can join you. I had one of my coworkers always would say, you are, you are too good. Come with me to the dark side. <laughs> he said, you are just too good. You are just too good. And he used to try to push my buttons to get me mad. And one day he pushed the right button. And I got mad. He said, oh. Holy man, you got mad. I said, you really don't want to see me now. Because the old man comes out. And the old man is not a good person. I said, and I will give you the peace of my mind that I have reserved to have burned forever. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't have to get involved. By the way, Sometimes it may be enough to purpose in our heart not to defile ourselves and people will leave us alone. You going to do this? No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. And sometimes just the purpose that we have is enough. But other times it may not be enough and we may have to request not to participate like Daniel did here. But we cannot and we must not be undefiled. Daniel requested not to do it. Daniel said, you know what? I'm going to request of the Prince of the Eunuchs that I not defile myself. 
And I like what verse 9 says, that God had fought Daniel in favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. He had compassion on him. By the way, you might not always get that. You might get the reverse. You might get someone who's belligerent. But they may not be kind to you. Hey, once I had that my job, they wanted me to do some things that were not right, and I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And uh, they, they weren't so kind to me. But you know what? I had a higher authority. And I had to request not to do those things. Did they like me? No. But you know what? I'm glad God loves me. Amen. I don't do what I do for the approval of men. And I praise God for it. But that's not why I do what I do. They didn't have a heaven to put me in. They didn't have a hell to put me in. And those are the next weeks, the next days. Daniel's purpose led to requests. Our purpose may lead to requests. We cannot be ugly. We cannot afford to be ugly. Amen. There's enough ugliness going on already. There is enough. Somebody's got to stop and say, you know what? Let's live the type of Christianity that Jesus lived. Amen. You know what? Let's live the type of Christianity that Paul lived. Paul lived. Paul would rather get beat up than fight back. Now, I'm not advocating to get beat up. Right? I'm not going <laughs> to but preachers are going to be sitting there, take my clothes. No, run. Amen. <laughs> run is never out of style. Amen. I have run many a times. Amen. You don't have to sit there and let somebody beat you down and talk you down and belittle you. You don't have to do it. Amen. Well, I can tell you this. It may happen. Someone may throw some choice words at you. Doesn't mean you should throw some choice words at that. And then say, God bless you. God loves you. Amen. People get mad at the cash register. <laughs> God loves you. They just come to my... Hey, we just went. God loves you. Why are we going to say that to that? Well, I'm going to love you. He loves you anyway. Amen. Amen. What am I saying? Well, let's do our dead level best to be like Daniel when it comes to certain things. Let's purpose in our heart. And when the purpose is not sufficient, let us request not to get involved with whatever it is. That's contrary to God's law. And let's not be ugly about it. There's enough ugly Christians going on right now. Okay. Now don't throw your hand in an ugly Christian. Say, preacher, what is an ugly Christian? It's not Christ like, it's not like Paul is ugly. Amen. Okay. If you're thinking about giving somebody a piece of your mind, it's probably not a good piece to give. <laughs> and folks, let me let me help you out some. Same sex marriage people are people too. The, the, the people to their their men and women that Jesus loves and died for. Amen. It could be the love of God that they need to see in you and me and letting our light so shine before men that would be the deciding factor to change them from who they are to what God intends them to be. But you will never win them by being ugly. Amen. Jesus didn't win people by being ugly. Paul didn't win people by being ugly and on down. Daniel didn't. That's a work of God. And God can do that work through you and through me. But first of all, we've got to have that love. If you're here today without Jesus Christ, you need that love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. You got to believe on him. Say, preacher, you don't know my life. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. I know that Jesus does. And guess what? He loves you. I like what he said to the woman called adultery. He said, Woman, where am I to Jesus? She said, No man condemn me. He said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. He didn't condemn her, but he didn't condone the sin. What did he say? Go and sin no more. It's implied that he didn't agree with her sin because he said, Go and sin no more. He didn't condemn, he didn't condone. He said, You need to go and get things settled. And move on, folks. We have to make sure we're not condemning people. That's God's job. He's already condemned it. But don't you join in that. You just get the word of God. Word of God is sufficient. But don't be ugly. Don't be ugly. It says, let your light so shine. Let our light shine. If you're here without Christ today, I invite you to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins and accept the love of God. Why? He, he died for you. 
and died for me. We listen online, you need to have Christ as your Savior as well. But as many as received him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. And without Christ, make that decision today. And Christians, let's run our race with the name of Jesus, and let's not be out of your life. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. And thank you that no matter who's in the White House, the Lord is your on the throne, and you're still king. And as we leave here today, we don't believe in anything else, so we don't want to be ugly about the elections. We don't want to be ugly with the facts of the matter as to who's been elected. But Lord, we want to let our light so shine. We want to make sure that on purpose we're living for God. And when that purpose is not enough for those around us, help us to make requests and not be ugly about it like Daniel did. Daniel's purpose starts to request. Help our purpose lead to requests when we have to. And help us not to be ugly about anything. The Lord, there may be some without Christ. Help that man, that woman. That boy or girl to see Christ today before his everlasting truly. Help us with the transition. It appears it's not going to be a smooth transition, but it doesn't stop us from praying that you would work in the heart of President Trump. And would help them to relinquish and concede to the American people's votes. And we'll make a smooth transition. We know that we so good that Biden and Harris would do. Just like there's some good that uh, Trump and Pence have done. There's at least some bad that Biden and Harris will do, just like there's some bad that Trump and Pence have done. What about that not to affect how we pray for them, and how we live as a Christian, and how we continue to give the gospel. Thank you for loving us. God direct me in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes are closed when looking around. G2 is going to play a short hymn of invitation. Maybe in the quiet of your heart, you need to ask God to help you purpose in your heart. Not to defile yourself. Then when that purpose is not enough, you may have to make some requests. Maybe you need to ask God to grant you that power. The same song, finding more power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Today, you need to ask God to give you that power to stand, to lean, to trust. When the request has to be made, they may not be as nice as the human must to Daniel. But still, you can't get ugly. You're going to let your light shine. Let's live for Jesus day after day. If you're here today without Christ, why don't you come and see myself out, Pastor White out? Mrs. Dawson out. Mrs. White, Brother Hall. Mrs. Hall, one of our leaders. Maybe we won't have to share with you the word of God and how we can be saved today. Listening online, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. Shoot me an email. I'd be glad to talk to you about how you can be saved today. But folks, the election is pretty much a done deal. Continue to pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence and continue praying for President Elect Biden and Senator Harris. Lord, that we may see a smooth transition and uh, Lord, that we may see some things come together in this nation. But we know that it's not going to truly come together until Jesus Christ comes and is king. But until then, Lord, help us as God's people to shine. Help us not to be ugly and help us to live our lives 
looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, and he is our king and our prince of peace. And Lord, when people don't want to be peaceable, help us to still extend peace, the peace that passes all understanding. We thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for our guests, our visitors. Thank you for those viewing online. Thank you for the protocols you've given us for the COVID or continue to help in uh, our state and our nation with the rise and the increase and the help all things to be done according to your plan as we join in on your agenda and we thank you and praise you for it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Thank you for being here today uh, online. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, Pastor Mike got our closing uh, instructions and he'll dismiss us and uh, we look forward to seeing what God's going to do in the next days. Don't be ugly. Amen. Again, this morning, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Oh, sorry about that. And I'm thankful for our visitors that have come to be with us today. Pray that the service has been a blessing to you, and you're welcome to come back if you so desire. And those that are listening online as well, if you have not placed your offering in the offering trays already this morning, uh, there's a tray here in front of me, and there's one back on the back wall. Those that are on my right, we ask you to be dismissed courteously out here to my right. Uh, those on the left, out this way and back, so we can kind of keep our social distancing. If you choose to gather on the outside out there, it'll be fine uh, as you do. We fellowship together. You're more than welcome to do that. But well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessings as we depart. Amen? Amen? Father, thank you again for your blessings. God, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house this morning. We thank you for the instructions that we can get from your word. Lord, encouragement as Christians of what we can do and what we should continue to do no matter what goes on in the world around us, that we can still be the light and the salt that makes a difference in this lost and dying world. Again, we praise you and thank you for those that are visiting with us this morning. Uh, we pray that you continue to work and bless in their lives as well. Those that are listening online, may they have sensed your presence in their lives. And again, I pray that anyone here this morning, under the sound of this prayer, uh, whether it be here or online, this, and never known Christ the Savior, that this will be the day that they will make that decision for you before it's everlasting too late. Again, we praise you. Thank you for the ability to gather here this morning. We pray your blessings now as we depart. Bring us back again at the appointed time. And we'll be careful and to praise you and thank you for all that you've done. We ask these things now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.